Well, we started uh, on our effort to pass a budget, a balanced budget, and uh, structural reforms that the governor has uh, indicated that he uh, wanted us to pass before we would, he would uh, approve of a, of a balanced budget. So in the area of uh, reforms, uh, we were able to pass education reform today, procurement reform, pension reform, uh, mandate relief, a property tax freeze, and uh, we had a technical uh, issue with workers' comp. We're going to vote on that tomorrow. We believe we have an agreement on workers' comp. So that would be all of the reforms that um, we set out to, uh, uh, to pass. With regard to the budget, uh, as you heard from the debate, there were 14 meetings and negotiations, and uh, I was under the impression we had reached an agreement on the budget. Uh, the budget has three parts to it. You have the spending bill, you have the implementation bill, which contains a lot of the cuts that are in the budget, and then the revenue bill. So when we called the spending bill, the Republicans indicated they weren't ready to vote for it yet. Um, quite frankly, I was surprised we had all the Democrats voting for that, but, but we did. But the other two cannot pass without Republican votes. That would be the cuts and the... Uh, the revenue. So when the cut bill didn't pass, um, we, uh, we didn't call the revenue bill. So um, the issue is why did the Republicans not vote for the budget? And if it's because we didn't pass enough reforms, then I need to know specifically just exactly what we didn't pass. The property tax freeze bill was the bill that Senator Redonio introduced on January 11th. It's the bill that she had introduced years ago, and we finally passed it, along with all those other reforms, including workers' comp, which I hope to pass tomorrow. The budget was negotiated with compromises. If you heard the debate, there's cuts here to Medicaid programs. That makes some Democrats not want to vote for it. That's why you need to have Republican support. Now, I know it's hard for them, because you can check me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure they haven't voted for a complete balanced budget since 2002, which is 15 straight years of not voting for a budget. I know this is a new, you know, tough experience. And they have a lot of folks in their districts who are opposed to any kind of tax increases. We didn't even get to that. And I wouldn't expect them to have very many votes for revenue, but we need some, or otherwise we can't pass the bill. So I'm, I'm, uh, after we pass workers' comp, we're going to be, we would have completed the reforms, and then the only thing left is to come back and pass the, uh, uh, the implementation bill. It's called the BIMP and the, uh, and the revenue. And I'm uh, looking forward to doing that um, because, as you say, we have less than two weeks to go, and we have to get this over to the House. Happy to answer any questions. Well, yeah, we've, as you know, we started on January 11th, and they just need a little bit more time. And, and this is now uh, the middle of May. And so, and we are at the table the whole time, and we made the, m many changes, including, in, 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 as you can imagine, in the budget as well. So I, if they're saying that, they, that they'd be ready to do this if we have a four-year property tax freeze instead of a two-year property tax freeze, and that's it? That would be crazy because we're just, we just, that's a very difficult thing to pass. We don't have anybody in our caucus that wants to really jeopardize schools for more than the two years that some of these poor schools would be subject to this freeze. And that's why we put in the bill some mandate, uh, uh, some uh, relief for the poor school districts. This is a real critical provision that we've already compromised on by supporting the freeze. So, it, 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 Yes, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. You were going to finish it. Well, I'm just pointing out that I introduced and tried to pass and did pass her bill. Did she introduce a two-year freeze? Yes. Okay. Yeah. On January 11th. I think it was Senate bill. Um, it was uh, uh, the, the new one was 478. It was the same as Senate bill 13. The only difference being we gave a little relief to the poor school districts. 
You see, it's a fundamental issue because if you freeze property taxes at the same amount of money that they got the previous year, and they're a really poor school district, worst funding formula in the nation that hopefully we can now change, you don't give them any relief valve. They want to do it for f five years, four years. It's, it's especially when let's pass the two years. If it's working so well, we'll come down and pass another two years. So. Um, well, because the, either the senators who said that were intentionally trying to misrepresent what was in the bill, or they didn't know what was in the bill. The, um, it's, it's a pretty simple concept, that bill. Um, and it's different from what the Senate has passed in the, in the past. So we passed a, uh, Senator Menard passed the bill a couple times, didn't get called in the House, that took the worst funding formula in the nation, reformed it, and applied it to the, the entire amount of money we spend on schools, which is like $7 billion. And we held wealthier school districts harmless. That didn't pass the House. So they made a huge concession. They said, I'll tell you what we'll do, and this is the Management Alliance, Advanced Illinois, they said, Let's hold harmless the entire state. Everybody gets to keep what they got last year. And if we have any new money, that will go through a more progressive formula. That's what the bill did. So when we held everybody harmless from last year, even though it's the worst funding formula in the nation, we held everybody harmless, including Chicago. So we gave everybody the same amount of money that they got last year, or this current year. And then, in our budget that we negotiated with the Republicans, we hoped it'd be an extra $250 million. That money would go through this new school aid formula, and we abolish the old school aid formula. And when we abolish the old school aid formula, we abolish the Chicago Block Grant and any special deal. That's what's in the bill. So it's kind of difficult to debate somebody when they stand up and say something that's not at all it's not a matter of opinion. It's not factually true to say this keeps the Chicago Block Grant. This keeps the money that the Chicago Block Grant provided this year for Chicago, just like the categoricals are, are, are also accommodated for, because everybody gets to keep what they got this year. So how else do you, if you believe what I just said, how else can I describe that more? How can I debate that better than I have? I, I don't know how to. Why should people believe that these votes today is actual progress towards ending and passing <laughs> budget when Republicans have not been on board and the House has made it clear they're looking to kind of go their own direction? I don't know what's going on in the House. We just passed Senate bills over to the House, a lot of them. Right, but why should people think that this is more just kind of the usual end of session game where one chamber passes something, the other chamber passes something, and nothing actually? Because I, I don't know how to answer that question. We passed the bills that we, I've been working on for the whole, the whole session, and we negotiated them. And they're major pieces of legislation. How about a how about a how about a spending bill for a balanced budget? That's pretty significant. We passed that today, right? right? You didn't pass the bim, which, had which and, and I described why, didn't I? I think <coughs> that that bim had cuts in it. We need Republican votes. They're the ones that didn't vote for any of these things, these, those two things. So is this about putting the blame on them? It's not blame. It's votes. They didn't vote for the bill. So you should ask them, why didn't they vote for the bill? Because there weren't enough reforms. What was short of the reforms? There's six of them that we passed once you get uh, workers' comp passed. We've been working thousands of hours on these things. They've never voted for a budget in 15 years, so I know it's hard, but they've got to... What do they want us to do? They keep on changing. We, we're real close. This is it. This is what the bills do. They're, they're a balanced budget. There are a lot of cuts. 
a lot of sacrifices. So we sacrifice at the, at the negotiations and budgets. They sacrifice, and then we vote for the bill, and they don't. Is this as far as Democrats can go? You expressed on the floor that this is. We're doing what they said they wanted, and they're voting no. Are the cuts in the FEMP the ones that they suggested? Yeah, of course. Well, because, because it has, the, the property tax freeze is primarily the education. The, the, we had suggested that we have two separate bills, but uh, the Republicans wanted to have, have it in one bill, okay? So by adding municipalities to the property tax freeze, it requires a three-fifths vote. So we could go back and, and separate it and pass the property tax freeze for schools. But um, that hasn't happened yet, but that could obviously be done. And that's where the bulk of the property taxes go, to school districts, not to the municipalities. Mr. President, we're talking about a budget bill that passed, and a budget implementation bill that did not pass, and I'm trying to, trying to understand that so I can explain it. And would it be better and more accurate to say that uh, the bill that didn't pass was Implement yeah, it, it, to, to generalize it, yes. The reason, if you look at the roll call, there's there's um, there's provisions in there that some Democrats don't like, right, on some of the cuts. But that's why you do a structured roll call. That's why you do an agreement. So between the two of you, look at the uh, uh, the the, pen, the pension bill. I think it had 31 votes, 16 Republicans and 15 Democrats. That's that's classic. That's how you pass a bill. But when one of your partners is not voting for it, then you can't pass it. I was, you, could, you could say I was surprised that the spending passed, but uh, with Democrats only. But uh, the, the point is that you have to have Republican votes on a budget that they sat and negotiated. They didn't even say that they didn't sit and negotiate it. They didn't even say that they didn't even agree with it. They just said vaguely, we're still not in agreement because there's some more other issues we still need to to settle on. So go ask the Republicans and the governor what they, what they are, because we need a three-fifths vote, as you pointed out, for property tax freeze for, for municipalities and spark districts. If that's what they want, they got to vote for it. Two years is more than fair. That's what they introduced, and that's what we've passed. So you talk about moving the bar. That's it. No, I, I know. I'm acknowledging that, but it, I, how many votes did they get? I, it was short of 36. Yeah, so I'm counting that if it was a separate bill for school districts as passing, okay? I apologize if I didn't make that clear. There's home rule preemption in, this, in, the, in the property tax freeze for municipalities, and we were planning on having it in two bills. It was a decision last night to put them in one bill because we thought we had this Republican support. Well, that's not true, and this one was balanced because they negotiated it, and then they voted no. Are you, are you saying then that the others were balanced? Oh, absolutely, since, especially since uh, uh, 2011, because we, we needed to get more revenue, and then we used the revenue to pay off pension bonds and the old bills. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, I've, I've been, since I've been here, I've been focused on the budgets, and they are they're, they have been balanced. That's why we paid down the, the you look, how much, how much do you owe people? That's a good measure, right? So a 30-day cycle is about $3 billion. That's how much we were when the governor took over. Now we're at 14, I understand. We're at 14 billion in old bills and we're up to 71 million in campaign dollars in the governor's account. So where do you go from Try to pass workers' comp tomorrow. I guess we could talk about the property tax freeze for education, if that's something we should redo. Uh, then uh, we'll wait for the Republicans to vote for their budget. What about revenue? Is it the budget that was passed today? It's based on there being a revenue. Oh, yeah. We have to pass revenue. We need Republican votes. Today they were against it. Maybe tomorrow they'll be for it. Because we've passed the reforms, or, or the ability to pass the reforms. 
maybe I'm missing something, but to me it was pretty simple. We passed reforms and a budget. We negotiated a budget. I, st I told you I was working on it on Sunday to, to narrow the, the last, uh, my, my wife was wondering why I was working on Mother's Day, as a matter of fact. So, so we, the revenues, you know, we have a lot of votes for revenue. We don't need a lot of theirs, but we need some. We need a lot of votes for these cuts, the BIMP that didn't pass. We're ready to go. Yeah. Yeah, the big thing was to change the uh, way we borrowed the $7 billion. They had a different way of borrowing it, which would have borrowed less money, like a billion dollars less, and it would have cost more to pay it off. And so by changing that back to the original plan, we saved $345 million, which just about narrowed the gap. So that we have a balanced budget here with the revenue and, and a negotiated revenue package. They, negotiated the revenue package too. 4.95, you know that was their, we couldn't go higher than 4.95? That's what's in the bill, 4.95. Is it true that the uh, Republican caucus is in agreement with the workers' comp plan that you've put forward but they can't get the governor to agree? No, I, I, from what I understood, they told me last night they were for the workers' comp bill. The bill that was filed had some language that had not been in previous versions. So we're trying to track that down. I think we'll just, it was a technical addition that we're going to remove. I think the amendment might have been filed to do that. So we expect that there'll be an agreement on workers' comp. Now, when I say an agreement, it'll be like an agreement on pensions. It'll require a really, it'll be a close vote because there's a lot of folks that don't want to vote for workers' comp reform because there's people still working against it. That passed too, I think, didn't it? Yeah, 36 votes. Um, well, for fiscal year 18, okay, we're talking about fiscal year 18, the amount of money that comes in and the amount of money that we spend is equal. That's what I would say is a balanced budget. And there will still be, um, uh, there will still be a payment cycle, which will be higher than 30 days, like it was when Governor Rounder came in. So. Um, I can't tell you when the payment cycle will, will be back down to 30 days, but I think some people say 90 days would be considered acceptable. So, uh, you know, I'm not exactly sure how much that the, the, cause that goes up and down during the course of the year. I do know that if we don't do anything, let's focus on that. That's $24 billion that we'll owe on Election Day next year. I also know that if we don't pass a balanced budget, we're going to continue, apparently, to continue to obligate ourselves to spend more than we have coming in. Let's not forget why we added um, an extra $11 billion in the last two years. It's because we haven't had a budget. So we should keep in mind what we're trying to do. We're trying to stop the bleeding here, too. Okay? So you, you wouldn't not pass a budget because you still owe you know, $4 billion in, in old bills when, if you don't pass it, you're going to make it $24 billion. Is that... Does that sound like I'm answering your question? Do you have a follow-up question? No. Oh, okay. Well, can I ask you about the casino one that we haven't talked about yet? Um, passed again. It had passed earlier when it was linked together. The main thing is I can tell you it's $307 million for the budget. And there was an issue raised today from, about Chicago getting its own license. Yet again, um, it comes to, I mean, the most part, it comes to the It's a, it's a non-issue. It's, it's a non-issue. Chicago's not going to run their own casino. They're going to contract it out to have some company run it, if they even have one. And then, <clears throat> uh, I'm just wondering, again, is it about going forward here, if this does go to the House, given the nature of this... this a lot of these have gone to the House. Well, the, if, if the Senate did its own negotiations, are you expecting the House to have its own negotiations? Are you expecting leaders to start up again? How do you... Yeah, well, remember the first premise of the grand bargain that Senator Rodonio and I had? Let's see if the Senate can work together and compromise, get a complete package, not just you know a budget, the reforms as well, and send it over to the House so we can then negotiate with them. That was the principle today, too. But the Republicans weren't ready to vote for it because they just need a little bit more time because we're that close. Now, I'm rather late in the day regarding the leader regarding no. Do you feel a sense of accomplishment then? Yeah, absolutely. 
can you imagine the work that was done to get a budget and a revenue package negotiated and agreed to? That's what we're supposed to do here. That's the most important thing, and we've done it. We'll sit down and negotiate with them. There, there's not a lot. These issues are, it's not like we have diff, they have different issues. Uh, they might have a few uh, different priorities, but for the most part, it's going to require the same negotiations. The, uh, they might be working on their budgets as well. I haven't, I haven't seen them, but they, maybe they haven't filed them. But I'm, they can't be that much different than what we're working on. You know, I've heard that before, but let's think about that. You mean when the income tax comes back from the House, it's going to look different? Let's think about that. If we pass an income tax over there and they change it and it comes back, that means they would have voted for an income tax. How different? Do you think they could pass one without a bipartisan vote? Probably not. So why would it be so much different? They're not going to be that much difference. There's only certain ways to raise money and certain ways to, to spend money. And, you guys and we, we also know that this always happens, right? There's two chambers. You've got to reach an agreement to get a, a deal. And we've done it many times. The Democrats have, anyway. Mr. President, you were talking to Leader Redonio uh, when we were in the late session, and Tony and I were trying to eavesdrop and, and lip read, and we, we couldn't quite make it out. What kind of answers were you getting from her uh, you know, on what was going on? No, we just wanted to verify that the, uh, the, the workers' comp bill, we shouldn't call it until we had an agreement uh, on what the language was supposed to say. That's all. <coughs> the issue's been left out to dry by uh, the, the governor and the other Republicans? No. After the governor's op-ed yesterday in the SGR, he said he once, once again said he protected people from the tax hike. Do you still think he'll ever sign off on, on more revenue? Yeah, I, I assume that he knows that we, um, we need to have some revenue in order to have a balanced budget. That's what the people who negotiated with us on the budget acknowledged. The governor himself had a balanced budget document that said $4.5 billion grand bargain. So I think that means he needs revenue, right? So. No, we, we stayed true. We wanted to call these things and vote on them back in January. It was the request of the Republicans to continue to change things and to delay, which we finally last week started and now today called us to a vote. And I think we're ready to, real close, to finish passing the rest of the bills.